Okay, so I have put my sweatshirt on. I look like a ghost because of my ring light, but it's okay. We're just gonna like avoid it for now. Um, if you didn't know, my name is Taylor. I yeah, my name is actually Taylor. It's not Le it's not Lisa, but it's Taylor. Um, I am twenty three years old. I feel like I'm like a million years old, but I'm twenty three. And, um, I have lived a lot more life than I care to. Um, and it's been hard. My life has not been easy, but nobody's life is easy, right? Um, if you didn't know, I am a trans person. I am a female at birth. Um, I'm currently taking testosterone. I am okay with non-binary pronouns, so they, them, but I also use he, him as well in my personal life. And so working on myself in the last couple of years has been a really big step for me, um, but we're not here to talk about that. We can talk about that journey in a different, like, video, because I feel like that would be, that would be cool to talk about. Well, it's my channel. I can do whatever I want. So maybe I will. Um, if that's something you guys would like to see, you can always just tell me in the comments. But um, today I am going to be talking about something that's been like on my mind, um, something that's been relevant in my life, um, which is my eating, my eating disorder stuff. I know that a lot of you guys came to my channel initially because of my eating disorder stuff and then a bunch of other diagnoses happened and my life kind of got derailed a bit and I moved in with a, a partner that was not a good fit for me um and then my whole life just like spiraled it seemed like and I know that a big question is how has eating been um and that's what we're here to talk about so my eating within the last um couple of years has been pretty shit. I, um, my eating disorder has gone from me being 180 pounds to, so I'm five foot two. Um, and so I've gone from being 180 pounds, which is my heaviest to down to being 103 pounds, which is my, my lowest weight, which granite is not like a super, super, super low weight. And, um, Right now, I won't really share kind of what weight I am right now, but my weight is lower on the lower end. So, um, I, yeah, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so, one thing I wanted to talk about was the obvious. Um, I do an okay job of hiding it most of the time, but um, if I smile you'll see that I am missing a tooth. Um, that's not for no reason. Um, that is directly related to my eating and my eating issues. And my cat is behind the high cutie patoot. Come here. Moira. Her name is Moira. 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 <laughs> she's not listening to me. Cats have selective hearing. And you can see that she's blocking the, the ring light because I can't, come here. Come hither, child. Stop blocking the light. Mm. How rude. Hi, cutie. Hey. She's sniffing my headband. I have a little headband. Just ignore that. Hi. How art thou? Come here. Come here. You can come sit on my lap if you want. What are you? Goodbye. Okay. Hey, come here. Okay, she's not in the mood to say hi, but she's because she's has an attitude problem. But she's my cat, so like it makes sense. Okay, Moira, stop blocking the light, please. <laughs> <sighs> Cats. Anyways, what I was trying to talk about was my tooth. Um. I lost my tooth due to eating issues. Um, it's 
not something I'm super proud of. I do have a, um, like a partial thing that I put into my mouth to, it has a fake tooth on it. I call it my, my dench, my singular denture, um, or my, um, it's just, it's called a flipper in a lot of places. Um, but it has like a fake tooth and, and it, like, it makes it look like I have teeth and I'm not missing like any more in the front. I have had, um, my back ones removed too, because what happens is the stomach acid, um, malnutrition, it all has an effect on your teeth. Um, I'm someone who goes through periods of restriction. Um, and I'm also somebody who binges and purges. Um, and my purging is, um, induced vomiting. I do exercise when I do have the energy, but it's really hard to when, you know, you are binging and purging constantly, um, or frequently. It's hard to have the energy to work out. And so, that's been my main thing. My main thing has always been binging and purging, but I do go through periods of restriction and like laxative abuse and diuretic abuse, which, oh, sorry. I, I wouldn't recommend because it has, it has hurt me, um, in a lot of ways. Um, currently right now I am struggling with a lot of binging and purging behaviors and diuretic abuse. Um, and it has been really hard to get myself out of this, like, this cycle. Um, I would say for the last, like, year, I have been consistently, more than a year, I have been consistently binging and purging. Um, I used to film it because I, it took the shame away from me, um, talking about it. Um, because it is a real thing and people do go through it, but I don't think it's a, anything that people should be ashamed of because it's, it's mental illness for a reason. You know, it's doesn't, you know, take away the damage that you've caused other people, but it's an explanation for a lot of the reasons why people do things that they do when they're struggling with active bulimia or with eating disorders. And I initially started this channel to kind of like document, um, hold on one second. Um, anyway, sorry, my cat was scratching at the wall and that like is literally just about as bad as like nails on a chalkboard. Um, but I actually don't remember what I was saying. Um, but yeah, I've been really struggling with that recently. Um, and trying to get myself out of that cycle has been really hard. Um, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to get yourself out of that headspace. Um, you know, when I first started my, my YouTube channel, I was documenting binges, like actively documenting my binges that I was having to show people that like, I am somebody who is on a smaller frame, not like I don't personally see it, but, um, and by smaller frame, I'm short, I'm five, five foot two, like I said. Um, and so I felt really ashamed that like during these binges, I was eating 5,000 to 7,000 calories per binge and purge. And I was doing that multiple times a day. Um, and I wasn't seeing a lot of people talk about that. So that's why I originally started my channel was to document kind of, this is really what it looks like. It's not glamorous. It's not all aesthetic. It's, it's very harmful and it is, it never, it has never felt good. Um, I think in a lot of you know, in a lot of circumstances, it has eased my anxiety temporarily, but the after effects of purging, specifically self-induced vomiting, like, feels horrible. And it is one of the worst feelings. And if you know, you know. You know the shame. You know the guilt. Especially if you're someone who has stolen money from people, who has stolen food from people, who has had vomit bags rip all over them, um, who has had mice because of the food, the hidden food, who has found hidden bags of puke in their room, who has, you know, 
and done the walk of shame from your room all the way to the kitchen with all the bowls and the mugs and the spoons and the dirty plates and all the dirty dishes that you've used. It's embarrassing and nobody talks about it. And so that's why I initially started my channel and I, I wanted to talk a little bit about, about that um, and about my experience with that. Bulimia and binging and purging has made me do things that I'm not proud of. It created, sorry, my house is really, you can hear everything in my house. It's so creaky. Um, I have lied before about food, about money, about, um, you know, plans that I was making with people. Um, I have lied saying that I've needed money for rent or for, um, like, you know, or I, you know, needed money for X, Y, and Z. And I used it for binging and purging. Um, I've stolen my family's food when I ran out of my own money to binge and purge on. Um, I have, I have, you know, eaten my family's food. I think I just said that. I've stolen food from work. I have stolen food from grocery stores. I have done things that I'm not proud of. I have had vomit bags rip all over me. And when I mean I've had my vomit all over me, I mean it. And it's embarrassing. And I've had to use one of those like shop vacs that like can clean or that can like vacuum up liquids to literally vacuum up my own vomit off of my body, but also off of the floor. Um... It is awful. It's one of the worst feelings. Um, it really, it humbles you a bit. Um, brings you back to earth a little bit um, when things like that happen. I've been caught mid-binge, of course. I've, I have purged in public before. I have purged anywhere that someone could purge. I've gone to a park and purged in a hole. I have gone to, you know, literally I've purged everywhere. I've purged on every food you can imagine. I have purged, I have binged and purged on broccoli, like steamed broccoli, not fucking raw bro broccoli, that would suck ass, um, on vegetables, steamed vegetables, and then purged it when I have no reason to be doing that. Um, I mean, I have no reason to be purging anything, but really like steamed broccoli. Okay. Um, and sometimes it's gotten so bad. And I would say that by sometimes I mean like currently right now, it's so bad that like, I feel like I don't have any of those safe foods left. I've been, I've purged, binged and purged on everything in the whole entire world that like nothing feels safe anymore. Um, I have, yeah, I, right now I have a crack in my lip and I have cracks chronically on <laughs> like on my face because binging and purging dries out your skin makes me look like the fucking joker because i've i have had to like unhinge my fucking jaw to purge obviously it's cracked my lips to the point where it's like almost like permanently scarred um my hemoglobin sits extremely low to the point where i pass out i anytime i stand up I get so dizzy and I see like galaxy and stars and stuff. And it's because, it's because my eating, um, and it's embarrassing, but it's not something that you should be embarrassed of if you're currently going through it. Sorry, I'm going to get emotional. Whenever I hear stories about other people going through this, it makes me emotional and I'm emotional right now. Um, because it has completely taken my life away. Um, and I see how it's destroyed so many other people's lives as well. 
Um, and it's not fair because a lot of us who struggle with eating disorders struggle because we're coping with something, something that's uncomfortable happening in our life, something that is so hard on us emotionally that we feel like we have no other place to turn other than food, whether that's restricting food, eating too much or purging or exercising or chewing and spitting, like any kind of eating disorder stuff that you can, you can think of I've done. Um, and I feel for people going through it because it, it is one of the most isolating mental illnesses I've ever experienced in my life. Even being suicidal, even having severe depression, even having, um, you know, dysthymia, chronic dysthymia, it is one of the most isolating mental illnesses that I have ever experienced. And I have been diagnosed with PTSD, with a whole host of other bullshit. Um, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever dealt with. And I'm still dealing with it four years later. And it breaks my heart to see other people struggle. because I know how shameful it is and I know how secretive these kinds of things are. And I know how hard being impatient is. I've been impatient four times. Um, I've had multiple suicide attempts. I get it. I've been there. And it's one of the worst things that a person can go through, I think. Um, especially like mentally. Um, uh, And people don't understand what it's like, which is why I make these videos talking about how my experience has been so that people feel less alone because it makes me feel less alone too. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, we haven't made mistakes because we all have. We've all done things that we're not proud of because of our eating disorder. Um, and if you're watching this right now and you're thinking, I have done so many things that I'm not proud of, it's okay. We, we, we all have. And it doesn't make us any less of people. It doesn't make us any less worthy, um, we deserve to be here, even with all those things that we have, even with all those things that we feel ashamed about and the things that we've done, it's not us. That is a direct relation to our eating disorder because I know that the tailor inside of me, the tailor that I am right now would never steal food from a grocery store but my eating disorder latches on and the hunger kicks in and my eating disorder brain lights up and it's almost like I'm not even there it's like I dissociate and I I buy binge foods and before I know it I'm I've eaten 7,000 calories and I'm not even aware of it um, that's not me. That's not Taylor. That is my eating disorder trying to kill me. And so I think the biggest thing that's helped me is trying to separate eating disorder from Taylor because they're two different identities. You know, my eating disorder has its own goals and Taylor has their own goals. My eating disorder wants me dead and wants me isolated and wants me skinny and wants me bony, wants me sick, but Taylor wants so much more for my life, like I want so much more for my life, which is why it's so hard to be actively struggling, um, so I want you to know that if you are struggling right now, in the same boat that I'm in right now, 
I want you to give yourself a little grace and a little leniency, even though I know, I know inside you feel like you don't deserve it. You feel like you haven't earned it. You feel like you've done things that are so deplorable that that being gentle with yourself would be almost sacrilegious. I know you think that because I do, but I'm here to tell you that it's important to be lenient with yourself while you're healing and healing isn't a linear process it's something that goes all over the place and it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect but it means that every day you're going to give yourself the chance to experience joy and to experience happiness without having to earn it you know you don't need to earn happiness. You don't need to earn food. You don't need to earn any of that. You've done that already by existing. And that's something that I have to remind myself of all the time.